G'day. So, I want to talk a little bit about allergies in Japan and starting today, fructose. Because for me, fructose is the devil. I have a fructose intolerance or malabsorption and so it's a little bit fun here in Japan dealing with that. First of all, I'm not a doctor, not a nutritionist, not a dietitian, not really much of anything except an English teacher. Uh, so this is all my own experience and you know what I've learned. Okay, so yeah, not a professional. So my first piece of experience is it's not really well known fructose malabsorption or intolerance here in Japan. So I actually haven't come across anyone who has known about it. So expect that if you're coming with fructose malabsorption, it's yeah, virtually unknown. So straight off the bat, remember that. Next, the distinction between sugars is a little bit different here in Japan. It's not as easy, I suppose, as it is for us in the West. We have fructose, sucrose, glucose, you know, pretty easy. Most people understand fructose, glucose, and you know, maybe even sucrose. But here in Japan, it's not so easy. Okay, so you're going to be looking at things, there's two that you're going to really hear quite a bit or, or see quite a bit, uh, katto and budoto, that's sort of the two that you're going to be looking at. Budoto generally is going to be your glucose, you're going to like that one. Katto is generally going to be your fructose, okay. We'll go a little bit more into this a bit later, okay. And the last thing to sort of round out a bit of an introduction here is that in the West, I suppose fructose and high fructose corn syrup particularly has been a little bit demonized. Um, it's like, oh, it's going to kill everyone sort of thing, you know. Here in Japan, that never really happened. So sugar is sort of just, if it's sweet, it must be good, you know, sort of mentality, I suppose. So, yeah this sort of rounds back into people haven't really heard about this kind of thing okay awesome okay so next what to expect coming to japan so of course just like in australia just like in america most of your soft drinks no let's be fair all of your soft drinks are going to have fructose in them so probably best to avoid that in australia i know that there's one or two sports drinks that you can buy that are uh, okay, in Japan I haven't found any. So you've got uh, Pokari Sweat and Aquarius here, and yeah, I, I tried them both, had a couple of bad days, wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so some of your traditional foods are also going to have things in it that might be a bit sketchy. So sushi generally is pretty good, you get by, but if you eat a bit too much, it might be a problem because. Sometimes they add mirin sauce to the sushi rice and mirin sauce can be quite sweet and depending on the manufacturer and things like that, it might contain fructose, it might not. I would err on the side of caution personally. Uh, what I have noticed is if you go to a kaiten sushi or revolving sushi, some of, the, some of that can be a bit sketchy um, in terms of fructose content. But the food is great, you know, it's, it's good and it's cheap. Um, but yeah, it could catch you out with a little fructose. If you go to a proper sushi restaurant where they where they hand make it on the spot, generally that's pretty good. So I, I'd, I'd personally recommend going there because the food's great anyway. Another thing to watch out for is miso katsu, which is popular in the Chubu or Nagoya area. I lived there just before. It's really delicious. It's like crumbed or like schnitzel uh, pork um, with with this beautiful sweet miso paste, which does terrible things to me. I can't help eating it, but it does terrible things. So yeah, probably best to avoid that one too. Next is you'll most likely get miso soup side dishes with a lot of things. They're going to have quite commonly uh, spring onion in it, uh, so be aware of that. If you go to the best place, I love it, Yakiniku, which is like Korean barbecue, barbecue restaurant. Uh, many of the condiments that you're going to have there are going to have sweeteners in them. Um, whether they're fructose or not can be really hard to ascertain because 
that you just don't have labels on these bottles. They are sweet. I've been to some places where it's been fine, you know, no problems. I've been to some places where the next day has been hell on earth, but you know, it's so it's, it's a bit of a hit and miss there, okay? And the other thing is, yeah, onion and spring onion is quite common in a lot of dishes. So, um, luckily, Japan does this great thing where they have little plastic foods and you can go, oh, that looks like it might be spring onion. Oh, I might just avoid that or brush it off to the side. But yeah, that's that's quite common, onion and spring onion. Okay, cool. Okay, next we're going to talk about vocabulary. So first we have budoto. This is your friend. This is glucose. We like glucose. Okay, so check, look out for this one. The next one. Isei kato. This one is not your friend. This is high fructose corn syrup. Next, we have mm, high fructose corn syrup 42. This is 42% uh, fructose to 58% glucose. Our next one will be this one. This is high fructose corn syrup 55. So this is uh, apparently the one most commonly used in soft drinks. Our next one, this is high fructose corn syrup 90. So 90% fructose, 10% glucose. Very much not our friend. So these ones are what you should probably try and avoid. And for the observant ones amongst us, you can see that in some of them there is Budor Tor. Okay, so if you see Budoto on its own, that's probably going to be okay. If you see it amongst kanji, and if you can recognize the kanji around it, then uh, it's probably not going to be okay. Alright, okay, so if you're like me and you like doing exercise, you're thinking, oh, sports drinks, there aren't any, oh, what am I going to do? So Japan's really humid. Uh, so it's really good to get some energy into you and uh, replace some salts and things like that. We don't have access to things like Kari Sweat, Aquarius, da 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 because they pretty much have varying degrees of fructose in them. So I found that if you go to drugstores, um, they sell these little tablets. Uh, they sell these little tablets. and Particularly in this one here, I found it's got just that bottom one there, Budoto. I've been using that, um, and that's helped out sort of increasing the amount of glucose that I'm taking in when I'm uh, consuming foods, but also when I've sort of been out riding in the humidity, it replaces the salts and things like that. So that's not a bad one. If you go to the drugstore, which is, it's, it's not like a what sort of like a big supermarket with mostly like a lot of cosmetics and it's got you know first aid kit it's even got food stuff like that you'll find a section with vitamins and you'll find those tablets there just be careful however i've tried a couple of these uh, tablets and i have found that some of them do contain fructose so it's really good to just target the ones that have good or poor in the name so that's a that's a really helpful one there, and it's helped me out quite a bit. Last, but not least, is if you're coming to Japan, you're going to be living here for a long time. I've been here a year and a half now. Uh, there are a lot of services that you can get to import foods that you would eat back home. For example, in Australia, there's uh, Sunnybrook, I think it is. That I'll, I'll put a, a link in the description below for that one. Um, you can import fructose friendly foods to make your life that little bit easier. I import fructose friendly chocolate because I have a soft spot for chocolate. And yeah, and that's, that's really good. Um, it's really convenient. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. I think I paid about 60 bucks for 10 bucks of chocolate, um, including shipping. Um, so it's, it's not too bad, but it's convenient. It's pretty fast and you can get some food, get the foods that you sort of want or need. Um, if you're substituting things like flour here in Japan, uh, you can get um, buckwheat flour reasonably easily here. Um, it's just called soba ko. Soba ko. Um, it's what they make 
what they used to make sorbet noodles out of. Just be aware that if you're trying to cut flour out of your diet as well, uh, most sorbet noodles will have a certain percentage of wheat flour and a certain percentage of buckwheat flour, okay? Um, you want to go for the 100% sorbet noodles, which can be a little bit difficult to find, but they are out there. Most organic shops here will, will sell it, 100%. Um, you can just ask for something like Kyaku Kusento Soba Ko, Soba, something like that. And they should be able to understand that, okay? Um, but yeah, there's plenty of alternatives. Tofu here is, is quite common, unless you have a soy allergy. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for gluten-free breads and things like that, that becomes a little bit more difficult, but we might talk about that later in maybe a gluten-free video or something like that. Anyway, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about uh, fructose-free or fructose-friendly in Japan, shoot me a message. I'm happy to look some stuff up for you, okay? Take care, guys. Cheers.